Say hello to everyone. Say rawr. I'm a dinosaur. No. I love you. Hello, hi, how are you? Happy Monday. I think it's Monday when this video is going up, so I hope you're having a good start to your week. Today I'm here for a book review on a Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. This is a book that I hold very near and dear to my heart, and I've always wanted to film a book review for it, but I haven't. But you know, today is the day. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk about it, and it's gonna be a great time because I feel like not enough people have picked up this book. Not enough people even know that Jurassic Park was even originally a book. Um, Granted, I will say that the movie is in its own way superior, but again, the book itself is also really good and I wish more people would pick it up because there's just so much stuff that this book really delves into and I think it does, it does such a good job at what it does. For, for what it is, Jurassic Park pulls off what it's trying to do exactly. Um, but before we get into the book, I really want to talk about the author, Michael Crichton. Um, I have a couple notes here that I want to share with you. Um, Michael Crichton was born in 1942 and he passed away back in 2008. I believe he passed away from cancer, so that is unfortunate. Uh, but he is a writer most well known for science fiction. Uh, he wrote Congo, uh, Sphere, The Andromeda Strain, Next, many more. I believe they even published a lot of his books after he passed away, books that were probably shelved or not, not completed, blah 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 blah. Um, he wrote Pirate Latitudes, which was another pirate book that I, I read a long time ago, but I wasn't the biggest fan of that one. Anyway, uh, a lot of people don't know that Michael Crichton actually has his MD from Harvard, Harvard Medical School, um, but it really, really shows in his writing because uh, Michael Crichton has this way, he really writes a lot about how technology and humans in a way interact and the, the bad and the ugly. Super fascinating guy. Um, he also is involved in film a lot. He was the original uh, writer and director of Westworld, not the new TV show, but I think the old TV show or movie. Um, he is actually also the creator of ER. Did you know that Michael Crichton created ER, the medical show? Which is just, I had no idea when I found that out. I was like, whoa, I remember watching episodes of that show in high school. But um, anyway, yeah, that's Michael Crichton. He's a really interesting guy. Um, but let's talk about the book. Jurassic Park, I think everyone is very familiar with the story. Jurassic Park is about this company named InGen, InGen that uh, recreates dinosaurs. They go and they find dino DNA from old insects that were preserved in amber and then they create these dinosaurs. They get an island and they put the dinosaurs there and they try to create a attraction, a, a kind of like a theme park of dinosaurs. And what happens? Nothing good as if you've seen the movie, if you know the story, you know that it doesn't end well for the humans, at least. Um, this book was released in 1990, but originally, originally, a long time ago, back in 83, Michael Crichton actually wrote this as a screenplay. The story was a bit different. Um, I guess a graduate student was trying to recreate dinosaurs and the point of view was from a kid, um, but I think he later changed the point of view for adults because it's more of a cautionary tale for adults, in my opinion, than for children. Or maybe it could be for children, I don't really know. Um, this book has a ton of action and adventure and so much science, but science that when you read it, it's very accessible. You don't feel very bogged down by the text. You feel like you're along for the ride. And this book is 400 pages, but it goes by so quick because from page one, you are just flipping pages. You are so invested in this story. You have Ian Malcolm, um, you have Alan Grant, you have Ellie Stratler, you have uh, Tim and his sister, and the, the story itself is a little bit different than the movie, so definitely go into the book knowing that it is a bit different. Some of the character reworkings are different, and uh, some of the plot and the structures are taken out, thrown into different movies, whatnot, but the book as itself, the core themes of this book are definitely the same, and I really love the themes of this book because this is definitely man versus nature. This is uh, man 
uh, basically playing God, trying to just do something just because they can, but that doesn't mean that they should, uh, you know, uh, because man can't really just control everything that they create in a way. Uh, like Ian Malcolm said, life will find a way regardless of what you say uh, these dinosaurs can or cannot do. There's no way that these people can control these dinosaurs. Um, I love that this book really, in a way, feels like uh, Frankenstein, at least to me. I don't know about to everyone else, but Frankenstein, you know, uh, Dr. Frankenstein, when he created this monster, he did it just because he really wanted to, but what he created, what he, what he, you know, brought to life, he, he rejected it. He didn't know how to control it. He couldn't stop it. He couldn't accept it. There was just no, there was no thinking. There was no, you know, how is this going to be okay? How, how, how ignorant can you possibly be in this scenario? That's kind of how I feel about Jurassic park with these scientists they just did something because they were one money hungry because they could do it they wanted to do it because they were money hungry they didn't think about what these dinosaurs what these dinosaurs were uh you know like they they didn't know what they were truly truly creating what they were dealing with here uh which is just super fascinating to think about let alone to read um this book's so good i just i don't know was there anything else that i really wanted to say i don't know I don't know. I love the characters. I love Ian Malcolm. In a way, I feel like Ian Malcolm uh, is uh, Michael Crichton throwing himself into a character because when you read about Michael Crichton and who he was as a person, I kind of feel like he was just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, but this book's so good. If you enjoy dinosaurs, for one, I forgot to say dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, guys. Dinosaurs. If you like dinosaurs, please read this book. It's just so good. Um, if you like a good action, adventure, if you like a really good thrilling ride, this is the perfect book for you. And even if you've seen the movie, I still highly recommend this because it's just so good. Um, some of the characters in this book are written a bit, a bit unlikable, but you know, hey, in the end, a bunch of these people get in, eaten by dinosaurs and T-Rex and velociraptors anyway, so what does it really matter, right? It's fine. Um, I do highly think it's worth the read and I recommend it time and time again to everyone that, you know, I see who hasn't read it. I'm like, hey, have you read Jurassic Park? And they say, no, read it because it's Jurassic Park. Yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to say today. Um, if you enjoyed Jurassic Park, I think that I would recommend Frankenstein, to be honest, because I just, I see so many you know, similarities between the two. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have to say for today. This was my review of Jurassic Park. Uh, oh, also, if you like Jurassic Park, you should read Meg by Steve Alton because Giant Shark. Are there similarities? Maybe a little bit, not completely. One is definitely better over than the other, but whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, okay, now, now I'm done. I'm done, I swear I'm done. I'm gonna go. I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your week and I'll see you Wednesday with a new video. Have a good one. Bye.